Well, our first introduction to her was, of course, that name, Zephyr Ticha. Then we soon learned that the Fordham Law Professor was poised to challenge Governor Cuomo in New York's gubernatorial election. Now, who would think that on primary night she would have stolen more than 30% of the vote? And she also has a book out to boot. Corruption in America is out, and surprisingly, it's doing better than the governor's new memoir. I'm now very pleased to be joined by former Democratic gubernatorial candidate Zephyr Ticha. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh, it's, it. it's wonderful to be here. Well, I want to get into the book because uh, obviously it has a lot of application, sadly, all the time, but especially with the election that we saw just this past Tuesday. But a, a few questions about the campaign. You probably saw Fred Dicker's column that was yeah. out today that apparently, or allegedly, there was a, a backroom deal that was negotiated with both the governor and Dean Skelos that the governor, in effect, would stay off of Long Island. This in conjunction to you got a lot of angry folks in the Working Families Party who thought the yeah. deal they struck didn't materialize in terms of, uh, let's just say, a motivated governor uh, for his party. And then some folks who thought that that in terms of state senate races, uh, that there'd be much bigger presence on the governor's part. Yeah. It didn't turn out that way. Um, did any of this surprise you uh, from what you saw in the run-up to the primary till obviously in the months that succeeded to last Tuesday? Hey, are you allowed to be not surprised and still shocked? Yes. I am. <laughs> I'm not surprised, but I, I still am, I guess, a little outraged. Um, and I don't know whether the allegations in the column are true. I can't know. Um, but I can tell you that in my brief conversation with Andrew Cuomo when I conceded, we talked about winning back the Democratic Senate. Andrew Cuomo promised repeatedly to help win back the Democratic Senate. And yet when it came time and, you know, it was close, there were a lot of races where there just even wasn't that much attention. So attention yep. makes a difference. The governor showing up makes a difference. The governor mentioning your name makes a difference. And he just wasn't showing up. He wasn't stumping. He wasn't mentioning anybody's name. And you know, this is part of a pattern. I, uh, I, I said during the campaign, and I still see it, I think Andrew Cuomo basically is more of a trickle-down Republican than a, a Democrat. Well, you're and, not the only one saying that, and yeah. you're also not the only one who's voiced some of those frustrated Democrat concerns. Steve Israel, um, the yeah. Long Island Democratic congressman who, uh, and he made it clear he's not doing it again, but he ran the DCCC here, uh, basically the post that tries to help Democrats getting elected or stay elected in Congress. He said the governor was MIA during the whole campaign. Yeah. Well, I've heard different schools of thought on this, and this is just, the, yeah. obviously, we're just opining here, but there is a school of thought that says the Democrat preferred the way it was for the last four years with the IDC, and that basically it forced the Assembly and the State Senate to kind of work it out before it even got to his desk. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's, uh, there's some truth there? Well, I think that he, I mean, what I see is that he's pursued more of a, you know, like I said, conservative economic agenda in this state, which, you know, let's be frank, actually is a lot more liberal than Andrew Cuomo. I mean, people here want more money yep. for schools. They're quite comfortable with higher taxes for big banks. Um, and uh, that he likes having the Republican or IDC as an excuse for not pursuing Democratic ends. So at the end of the session, he can say, look, I did just could, I, could. Yep. I did the best I could. I couldn't pass minimum wage. What am I, what am I, what am I gonna do? I mean, and that to me is a shock and a shame. If he cared about that, he would have been pushing for a Democratic Senate. Well, and that's going to be the consequence in all likelihood of Tuesday, yeah. isn't it? That minimum wage, we heard this in, um, in his victory speech on election night, yeah. that's probably not going to happen. In fact, there are some quotes here from folks who said, business interest here, hey, we know what we expect out of the state legislature. We'll talk yeah. about that as it applies to your book as well. Minimum wage, pay equity, some of that stuff, that's off the table now in terms of in all likelihood yeah. in the makeup of the state senate. Well, uh, you, as you know from the fact that I chose to run when I had low odds, I feel like, yes, the likelihood is low, but that doesn't mean we should just sort of pack up and go home because this really matters for people's lives. Whether or not you have a Republican or Democrat uh, represent, representing you, make sure you're going to meet with them and say, you got to keep pushing this agenda. Because, mm. um, you know, in two years, um, we are going to have an opportunity for a real democratic sweep in New York, and that's very exciting. So what we do in these two years, pushing and, and pushing the, the agenda forward, I think is really important. Do you think you did as well, uh, trying as, as agnostically or objectively <laughs> step away from it now, but do you think you did as well with so little resources, little name recognition, although the name stuck with people, um, 
and going against such a well-funded and obviously an institutional name like uh, the governor in the primary, did you do as well be people we think we're trying to send the governor a message or because they really bought your platform? I mean, we had over-under odds here and yeah. all of us, other than Andrew, were completely wrong. You did better than all of us thought. Yeah. What do you attribute it to? Well, I like to think that it isn't, wasn't just an anti-Andrew Cuomo vote. And, and the reason, as you may remember, there was somebody else on the ticket, yep. Randy Credico, and he got 4% of the vote. So I think that shows if, if, you, if it was just a protest, mm -hmm. you would see an even split between us. I think there's a sleeping giant that most Democrats aren't speaking to, which is true populist progressives who want a clear story, who want real leadership, who want a kind of fearlessness instead of this timid halfway uh, kind of approach. It's no secret people said um, that this probably won't be the first and last time we've heard your name, that whether for statewide political office, uh, you became a brand in many ways, whatever you choose to run for, mm -hmm. if you choose to run. That all said, can you win a statewide office mm -hmm. without going to meet Democrat or Republican yes. here with those big name donors. Okay. Don't you have to go and ask people to write a check and a big one? Yes, and in New York, the limits are you know basically $60,000. I mean, the limits are so high, they're laughable. Um, so yes, right now under this system, that's what you have to do. Now there's opportunities in primaries that don't exist in the general yeah. election. And once you win the primary, then you can raise money because then the Democratic Party will come behind you. And that's the, that's the path we saw. Mm. Now, if we had a public financing system, even this last campaign, I would have raised $4 million instead of 800000 I would have gotten on TV. Yep. I would have been able to do mailers. So we can have a public financing system in New York. Uh, that's something that Andrew Cuomo keeps saying he's for and then keeps not pushing for. And that's, you know. But if you don't have, mm -hmm. um, uh, Campaign finance in the way that many people, not just you, have discussed. To win, do you get swallowed up by part of the machine? Do you become part of it too? Is that the dilemma? Otherwise, it's a great message to have, but in the end, you want to win. To affect <laughs> right. change, oh, yes. you've got to be elected. Oh, no. I right. want to win. Mean, you're not in it just for some chaotic <laughs> no. uh, you know, no. uh, you know, imagery here. Well, I wish I'd had more than three months because, you know, yes, the trick is that there are people out there. I mean, we don't have a system-wide fix right now. We need that system-wide fix. We need to change the way we fund campaigns, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, Teddy yeah. Roosevelt thought we should have public financing system. Right. We're, we're 100 year, 107 years too late. Um, but even without that, there are big money donors, not as many and not as systemic, who see that you know, we, we have a threat to our democracy if we don't get some more populists in here. All right, we come back. Uh, Dom and I are going to get into some really interesting news, or at least allegations out there, saying, among other things, that Governor Cuomo had a backdoor deal with state Republicans here where he made a deal, and it seemed that he carried through on it, not to help out Democrats, especially on Long Island, during the last election. We'll talk about that and more after this.